Good morning, Facebook family, friends. What a privilege, what an honor to be with you today to share a word from the heart of the Lord to your precious hearts. I pray that the word that comes forward today will be a blessing to you. As a matter of fact, I know that it will be. So, you know, let's get right into it. We're going to be coming out of um, yeah, you know, we're going to jump around, but I think we're going to start in first Peter. We're going to start in the second chapter and we are just going to read verse 20, maybe 25, but verse 24, we're going to be talking about being completely made whole through Jesus Christ. All right, let's read the scripture who his own self, and the who would be Jesus, his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And we're gonna read in the New Living Translation he personally carried our sins in his own body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, ye are, you are healed. Let's pray. Righteous Father, we thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. You watch over your word to perform it. It cannot return unto you void. We ask that you let your word fall on good ground today and bring forth fruit 100% and fruit that will remain for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. This verse, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. We understand that that means that Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins, that we who were uh, could be dead to sins. Sin would have no more authority, no more power over our lives because of him. And we could live in righteousness. You know, the scripture says, he that knew no sin, he became sin so that we could have the righteousness of God through him. Through the death of Jesus Christ, we that repented of our sins and received him as our savior, we have the very righteousness of God. So you see, when God looks at you and he looks at me, he doesn't see sin, but he sees righteousness. He, he sees his own righteousness, not the righteousness of the world, not our righteousness, which the scripture says is as filthy rags, but the righteousness of holy God. Amen. That's what Jesus did for us. That's the position that Jesus Christ put us in. Listen, we are right. We are righteous. Watch this. Just like God. You say, oh my God, you can't say we're like God. Yes, we are just like God because look what God said. He says, you be holy, be ye holy, for I am holy. He said, be like me. And understand that Jesus is coming for people who be like God. For the scripture says, as God is right now in his holy heaven, so are we right now in this earth, just like God. God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the broken body of Jesus Christ. Look at me and my wrinkles. Look at me and my brown skin and my whatever you think about me. Look at me. You see my external man. But you see, when God sees me, he sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ, yes, yes. and he sees me being just like him. So now what I want to talk about here is by whose stripes ye were healed. I want to talk about that ye were healed. Now you see this word, it doesn't you were healed from sickness. Now, you know, and I know the Christian still gets sick. If it's talking about sickness, why do we as Christians still get sick? 
Some people teach that Christians don't get sick. Wrong. That's wrong. Paul said, if anybody be sick, let them call for the elders of the church. Paul told Timothy, drink a little wine because you get sick sometimes. Your stomach get upset. Drink a little wine. So that's not what he's talking about. Now, does God heal sickness? Yes, he does. But you know and I know that God doesn't always heal sick people. You see? So what is he talking about? By whose stripes you were healed. Now that word stripes, it means wounds, mm -hmm. see? And that word wounds, it means a piercing through the skin. Mm -hmm. See, we know that he was pierced. He was wounded for our transgressions, sins, iniquities. He was wounded. He was pierced through the hands, see? He told Thomas, Thomas, here, see the holes in my hands. It's me, see? He had holes. He was pierced, wounded pierced through the hands, nailed to the cross for us. He was wounded by whose wounds we were healed because he took our sins, watch this, it says out of the way or away from us, he took our sins and he nailed them to the cross. When that nail went through his hand, when that nail made contact with that tree or a cross, it was a tree that they made in the shape of the cross. When that nail went through his hand and pierced that cross to that tree, our sins stuck to that tree too. See, he took our sins away from us, took them on to himself, nailed them to the tree. And so our sins are no longer on us. He now became what we were, sinners, who in verse 25 says, for you were just like sheep going astray. Jesus went astray and we came near. He was separated from God so that we could be close to God. See, he became what we were and we became what he was. He traded our sins for righteousness so that we could be like God. So it says, by whose stripes you were healed. So that word healed, it means thoroughly made whole, completely, totally, nothing lacking. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything I need to fare well. I shall not lack anything I need to be like God. Now, understand something. I want to make this very clear. I am not telling you you are God. I am not telling you I am God. I want to make that very clear. That is not what I'm saying. But I am telling you that we are like God. Yes, we are. How are we like God? How did Jesus make us like God? Well, it tells us right here to live unto righteousness. God is righteousness. He is light. He is holy. And in him is no darkness at all. See? And he wants us to be like that. He wants our garments to be white. Listen, Jesus said no spots, no wrinkles, no blemish can't go into the kingdom. He wants our garments to be white. White signifies holiness, you see. And so, you see, the righteousness, that's how we are like God. It says that we might have the righteous, he became sin, he died on that cross, he was nailed to that cross so that we could have the position, the righteousness, the holiness of God. And then he makes us thoroughly, completely holy. So when God, see, that's why scriptures say we can come boldly before the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Why? Because when we go to the throne of grace, God sees his children. He sees us just like Jesus Christ. He doesn't see us in our what you see me in my weak state. He doesn't see me in my decaying body state. He sees me becoming more and more Jesus Christ in sanctification. But he sees my spirit just like his spirit. And that's in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. It says, he that is joined unto the spirit of God is one spirit. See, one spirit. 
Jesus said to Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, Nicodemus. Can I enter the second time in my mother's womb? Nicodemus said, I'm an old man. How can I be born again? Jesus said, no, you don't understand. What I'm telling you is that you Nicodemus must be reborn by the spirit of God. See, your spirit must be reborn by the Holy Spirit. So now you can be reconciled, conformed to being like God. See, and that's what that scripture tells us. When you join to God, you are one spirit. Because understand something. God is not joining to anything that is unholy and unclean. He tells us. Touch not what is unclean, and I will receive you as my son and as my daughter. See, don't touch the unclean thing. Why? Because God ain't joining up with nobody who's willingly, wantonly touching things that are unclean. And we understand that that, that unclean thing is sin. Willful sin. See, if you just want to be a sinner, you can be. But understand, God is not in your sins with you. I'm sorry, I, I don't subscribe to once saved, always saved. If you just repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart, you can live like the devil. It doesn't matter because once you repent, you save forever and it don't matter how you live. See, scripture, Jesus said, every branch in me, in me, not beside me, across the street, he said, every branch in me that does not produce righteous, holy fruit, he said, my father is going to cut it off, take it away, and cast it where? Into the fire. See? And they're going to be burned. Now, you go study that and see what that means. See, that's firewood. That's fireplace wood. It's good for nothing. You're not producing. came up on the fig tree that was full of leaves but no fruit, he cursed that tree and said, no figs grow on you from now on and forever. That tree dried up, withered up, and died. It produced nothing. So, okay, I went over there. So, see, God is not talking about uh, you can live however you want to and it's okay. No, God said, come out from among them and be ye separate. He said for us to make a difference between what is clean and what is unclean. That means that what's clean should not be looking like what's unclean. Make a difference. There's a difference between clean and unclean. There's a difference between holy and unholy. See? And so that is how we are like God and that is how we are thoroughly made whole. We are thoroughly made whole in our spirit. You see, the Bible says, Paul said this, he said, I would that your whole body, your soul and your spirit be found blameless. See, and that all three belong to God for he created the body to live in it by his spirit. And he wants us to worship him with all of our soul. You see? They all belong to God, but now the flesh is more prone to living after worldly things. And if we're going to be like God, we got to keep that flesh under subjection. You can't say, oh, my spirit is saved, so it don't matter what my flesh does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Paul said, I keep it under subjection. I don't let it get away from me. I don't let it do whatever it wants to do. The works of the flesh that are in Galatians 5, he said, I don't, I don't let that happen. I keep it under subjection with the word of God. So Jesus, he presents us. Look what he did. He presented us to God. How? Through the death on the cross, he presented us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in the sight of God. So you don't have to uh, uh, act like, oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm not I'm not good enough. Oh, God won't hear my prayer. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You are more than good enough. You are the son and daughter of God. When your sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ, you have a right to come before God through Jesus Christ. He presented us. He said, look, when I repented of my sins, he said, Father, here goes Sylvia. Here goes Sylvia. 
She, she, she repented of her sins. She received me as her Lord and Savior. Amen. Father, you so loved her that you gave me. And she believed and she received. And look at her, Father. Now, like us. Let, let me show you. Let me show you something. In John, the 17th chapter. Oh, my nose keeps itching. <laughs> John 17. Let me show you something. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Jesus says, Jesus is praying for us in John the 17th chapter. Okay, let me see where I want to start. I'll just start at verse 19. It says, and, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. This is Jesus talking that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And we, okay, keep reading. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Listen, right here. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. See, God wants us to be one with him. One with the Holy Ghost. Oh God. One with Jesus Christ. Not God has a mind and you have a mind. No, no. No, God wants you to have his mind. And see, the scriptures say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, there is a spirit that controls every one of our minds. And that, listen, some of us got spirits with an S, see? But the Bible says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Some spirit is controlling your mind, but God said, let the Holy Spirit control your mind. How does that happen? You've got to be renewed in your mind through the word of God. You've got to read the word of God. Get out your thinking and get the thinking of God in your mind. See, what did he say? He said, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. Where do thoughts come from? They come from the mind, you see? So God said, you have my mind. And in order for you to have my mind, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my son to die so you can live. I'm going to send him so he can be separated from me, so you can be reconciled or reconnected to me. See? So you can think like me. See? Think like God. See, that's what I want to do. I, I know what uh, Steve Harvey said, act like a man, uh, think like a woman, act like a man, or whatever he said, think like a man, act like a woman. No, I want to think like God, and I want to act like a child of God, because that's who God is coming back for. That's who Jesus Christ is coming back for, those who think like him, those who talk like him. See, the Bible says that we are to walk like Jesus Christ, that we are to do the works of Jesus Christ, that we are to talk like Jesus Christ. Remember when Jesus... Uh, was captured in the garden and they took him uh, into the court and, and they were uh, uh, beating him and scourging him and Peter came along and uh, they said hey you were with him and he said no I wasn't I wasn't with him and uh, uh, several times they said that and one time they said yeah you were with him because what your speech betrays you. I could tell you've been around Jesus. Why? Because you talk like Jesus. You talk like that righteous man. I could tell you've been around him. See, if you are connected to Jesus, you ought to talk like him. People ought to know you talk different. See, if you've been hanging around Jesus, you ought to walk like him. See, God told uh, Abraham, I am the almighty God. Walk up right before me and be thou perfect. See, and that's how God wants us to walk before him. Perfect. You say, oh my God, you said that word. I can't be perfect. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because you see, that's what this means. That he, by his stripes, you were made whole. It means that you are complete in Jesus Christ, who is the head of all principalities and powers. And what does that word complete mean? It means thoroughly contained and lacking nothing. I'm perfect. I'm just like God. 
I'm not thinking too much of myself. I'm thinking like God. I'm telling you what has done for me. He has presented me to God perfectly, thoroughly made whole. Not my body. My body is decaying. Paul said, my outward man is perishing. Look at me. I, you know, I don't look like I used to. Y'all that know me, knew me for years. You know, I got some wrinkles. I say all the time, you know, I need a little bit right there. We could do that. And well, you know, that's because that outward man, he's perishing. He's going back to the dust from which he came. He's heading that way. Solomon said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. In other words, when I look in the mirror, I realize this gray hair and these wrinkles and, you know, these aches and pains and these bodies. I'm like, oh, my God, where did that come from? You know what it's all telling me? It's all telling me that this body is decaying and heading back to the dust from which it has come. Jesus did not come to save my body. He did not. He came to save my soul, my spirit to be renewed by the spirit of God so that I could have eternal life. That's what John 3, 16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him, look, would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. These bodies don't have everlasting life. See, you can lift it, you can tuck it, you can rub it, you can suck it, you can do what you want to do to it, it's still going to die. It's still going to head back to the dust. You might look a little better than, the, than some of the rest of us on your way, but darling, you're still on your way to the dust. You're still on your way to the grave, for it is appointed unto every man wants to die, and after death comes judgment, every man, every man. Death, death is a, a, a date that you and I can't cancel, can cancel that date. So he said, teach me to apply my heart to wisdom. Help me get some good sense here. I listen. It's time to get right. Look at me. I, hey, it's, it's time for me to get right with God. He didn't come to save these bodies. So, so, and there are people who teach Christians should not get sick. And if you get sick, you don't have faith. That's not true. Not true. Not true at all. See, that's not true. Now, sometimes God heals and sometimes he doesn't. And I don't know why you don't either. But don't let nobody put you on a trip if you got something that you're dealing with. Even if God was to heal you from a thing, you still not going to live forever. You're going to die from something else. You just got a little more time. Like Hezekiah. Isaiah went to Hezekiah and said, hey, God said, you're going to die. Get your house in order. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, said, I lived a holy and a righteous life before you. I don't want to die right now. Can you give me a little more time? God sent him back, said, tell him I give him 15 more years. But you see, he didn't give him 15,000 more years. He just gave them 15 more years because you got to leave this world. You can't stay in it forever. Now, if I know I got to leave this world, I need to be prepared to leave. You got car insurance. You got life insurance. You got homeowners insurance. Some people got insurance on their bodies because of the professions that they're in. We got insurance on your jewelry. These things that we uh, 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 deem as valuable. We get insurance so if anything happens to them, we can get compensated. Well, I tell you, you need to have eternal life insurance. Jesus gave us eternal life insurance. See, he did not come to save these bodies. He came to give us what we had with God in the first place. And that was eternal life. God never meant for us to die. Sin came in. Sin brought death. Death is an enemy. And the Bible says that that is the last enemy that shall be destroyed. And that is death. See, but until then, folks, we die. We die. We don't stay forever. And if you know, Solomon said, folks, look, get some wisdom, get some good sense. That's what he's saying. You need to get some good sense. You 50, 60. Now, we know you can leave here any day, any time, because tomorrow's not promised to anybody. But we know when we 50, we 70, we 80, we know. You ought to be sitting down making some arrangements with somebody so you don't leave all that on your family. 
See? So he said, get some good sense. See? Now, if I get some good sense and I know I got to leave here, I ought to be making some eternal, if I believe that, I ought to be making some eternal uh, plans here. I need, to, I, need, I need eternal security. Yeah. And that is in Jesus Christ. So then I need to, like, okay, how do I get eternal security? Like, real eternal security. Not eternal security and sin, but eternal security and go with God because I know one day I got to leave here. Yes. See? That is to repent. Repent. The gospel that John the Baptist taught. Repent of your sins. Be baptized. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gospel that Jesus Christ preached. Repent of your sins. Be baptized. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gospel that Peter and John preach. Repent of your sins. Be baptized. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You'll receive eternal Jesus came to give us eternal life, not stay here forever. You need to prepare for eternity. While you're doing all you're doing, shopping for Christmas and, and having a good time with your families and making all the plans that you're making, nothing wrong with that because he told us to occupy, go ahead and live a normal life until I come. But listen, watch this. And all you're getting, that same wise man said, and all you're getting, you better to get you some understanding see get you some understanding understand what this thing uh, is all about you came into this world you're gonna go out of it folks you're gonna go out you're not here to stay forever and if i'm not here to stay forever i need to make sure that i have eternal security because your spirit is gonna live forever somewhere and jesus christ out of the grace and mercy of God that abounds beyond our sins, died on the cross for us, nailed our sins to the cross, removed our sins from us. Scriptures say as far as the east is from the west, as high as the heavens are above the earth. When God looks at me, he don't see sin. He sees the saving blood of Jesus Christ covering me and seeing me look just like him. That's the qualifier. That's the qualifier. That I said, thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. You that knew no sin. I knew sin. You didn't. But you that knew no sin, you laid down. Listen, he laid it down. Nobody took it from him. He laid down. Let me tell you the story about the, the shepherd uh, in John, the 10th chapter. Here, here's what it means. You see, the shepherd... What he would do is that he would actually sit outside of the sheepfold, the gate, the door, where the sheep was. He would sit outside that door and, and guard and protect the sheep all night. He would actually lay his life down for the sheep if the wolf would come, if the bear would come. They could actually kill him, but he was willing to do that to protect the sheep. See, he laid down his life. But the hireling, see, in, in that tenth chapter of John, it said, a hireling, you hired me to watch your sheep. Uh, here come the wolf. I ain't getting eaten up for them. No, I'm not. <laughs> they on their own. I'm out. <laughs> see, that's what it said about a hireling. Because the sheep don't belong to the hireling. That's why we got all these bootleg preachers just abusing the sheep misusing the sheep because they're hirelings. The sheep don't belong to them. They belong to God and they have scattered the sheep and God's going to deal with every one of them who live low lives in the pulpit and who has brought disgrace and shame to Christianity in public, causing people to say, it, listen, this gospel can't help you. Why should I want it? You're a bunch of hypocrites. I don't believe in this. God can't save. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, yes, he can. He's going to deal with them. Nobody gets away. Everybody's going to give account of the deeds he's done in this body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. But this great grace wherein we stand, that God has given us grace that abounds beyond our sins so that we could be just like him through Jesus Christ. Through Christ. 
completely listen like you say i don't feel righteous i don't feel holy i don't look holy well it's not a feeling it's a fact it's a fact that Jesus died on the cross, nailed your sins to the cross, took them out of the way, removed them from you. That's a fact. See? It's a fact that he died and rose again. And then when I got baptized, I, I died with him when I went down. And when I came up, I, ra I rose in the newness of life and I was just like Jesus. It's a fact that I sit in, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus on the right hand of God. That's a fact. It's a fact that the blood signed my name in the Lamb's book of life. That's a fact. I don't have to feel that. Holiness is not a five-step program is doing what the word says that makes you holy see do what the word says and you'll be holy just like god be ye holy for i am holy don't touch what is unclean uh, don't live by the works of the flesh live by the spirit you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh that's being holy is to conduct your life like god conducts himself god don't lie so i'm not gonna lie God don't steal, so I'm not going to steal. God doesn't murder, so I'm not going to murder. Jesus told those religious leaders, hypocrites, you like your father the devil. He's a liar. He's a murderer. See, that's what Satan is. See, and when you act like that, you act like the devil, you are not like God. That's unholy. But God said, if you do what the word says, you'll be holy just like God. Now, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And one of the works of the devil is death. Death. He brought death in. Death, sin, separation from God. Jesus came to destroy that. Now, right now, we are positional. We have eternal life positionally. See, when we leave these bodies to be what? Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's for the saint. That's for the person who have repented of their sins and received Jesus Christ as their Savior. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. But when you are a sinner, when you are absent from this body, you're going to hell. You're going to go to hell now. You're not going to go later. You're going to go immediately. You're going to find yourself in hell. Well, you see, one of the works of the devil was death, separating us from God, sin to send us to hell. So Jesus came and destroyed that work so that we didn't have to go to hell, so that when we separated from these bodies right now, eternal life is dwelling in me right now see again paul said my outward man though my outward man is perishing my inner man he is being renewed day by day my inner man ain't got no leaks my inner man ain't got no arthritis my inner man don't have no kind of sickness and no kind of disease it is being conformed more and more into the image of jesus christ every day see and that's what we can't see eternal life is dwelling in me right now i'm not gonna get eternal life i got eternal life it is dwelling in me and that's why if i die immediately when i open my eyes or as robert likes to say the next voice i hear will be the voice of almighty god saying welcome home daughter what what is it uh, good and faithful uh, servant <laughs> Enter into the joys of the Lord. See, that's what I want to hear too. And, and I can be assured that I will hear that because Jesus Christ has made me whole. See, by his wounds in his hands. See, by him being nailed to the tree. He has made me whole. Thoroughly complete. Lacking nothing in the sight of a holy almighty God and that's what God has given to us that is the work of the devil that Jesus Christ destroyed you don't have to die eternally we're not talking physical death uh, uh, eternal separation from God is the true death that's the one you don't want you don't and you don't have to have it because Jesus Christ eternal life is in Jesus Christ 
in Jesus Christ. Paul said, I haven't attained it yet because I'm still here, but I'm pressing toward the mark of eternal life. That's what I'm doing. I'm pressing toward that mark. For the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He wasn't talking about the high calling of ministering the gospel. He already had it. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Go back and read it. It is eternal life. He said, I haven't obtained it yet, but I'm pressing. I'm living this thing. I'm holding on. I'm obeying the word of God. I'm doing what God said that I might win, that I may gain eternal life. That I may gain it. I'm holding on. I'm doing what God said do. Because I've applied my heart to wisdom, folks. I know I was born. I know I'm going to die. I know I got to give account of God. And I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but I can't pay for my sins. I, I can't. I don't want to. And I can't. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. His blood washed me white as snow. Folks, my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you think about me. I don't know what you say about me. But I tell you, my name, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't know about you. But according to the word of God, if I keep myself unspotted from this wicked world, God said he claimed me as his daughter. That's what he said. And I want to be the daughter of God more than I want to be anything else. So I thank God that Jesus, he that knew no sin, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace. He procured my peace by his dying. He got beat so I could have peace. It was upon him. And with the wounds, the piercing through his hands and his feet, I was totally made whole, presented to God holy and righteous. And that's my position right now. I'm not going to get eternal life. It's raining in me right now. I'm not going to be like God. I'm like him right now. And you can be too right now. Listen, don't try to feel. I'm going to do a message on feelings. See, the devil, for a lot of us, he, he, he deals with us in our feelings because he knows like, I feel, I feel, so I can't, so it must not be. He counts on you living by your feelings. And your feelings are good when somebody gives you a present or, you know, when you see a good movie and you cry or something. Your feelings are good, but your feelings ain't got no place in the Word of God. See, when, when it comes down to the word of God, that's what it is. It's not up for discussion. He don't say, D do you feel that, Sylvia? No. No. See, when it comes to the word of God, don't feel. Just do what it says. Just do what God says. And let God worry about the rest. If you do what he said, he'll do what he, what he said. Yes, he will. Jesus paid it all. He paid it for you and he paid it for me. He destroyed the works of the devil. Yeah, we got to battle. We battle. We battle with the devil every day. Every day the devil's trying to tell you that your salvation is not real. It's not true. That God somehow has lied to you. Oh yeah, you got to put on the whole armor of God. You need to understand you got an enemy. And this is what I say to people. If you do not realize that you are in a battle, darling, you are losing. You are losing because you are in a battle. Oh, yes, you are. So you gird up the loins of your mind. You get into this word. You pray. You seek God and, and thank him. See, Jesus with those ten lepers, ten lepers, he cleansed all ten of them. Yet there was only one that came back and said thank you. Jesus said, where are the other nine? Where, weren't there 10 of you? And yet only one of you came back to say thank you. Come on, folks. 
Thank God for what he's done for you. Thank him for salvation. Listen, yes, I do thank him because I got a roof over my head. I thank him for all of that. But I tell you, listen, you can be homeless and have eternal life. You can be broke and have eternal life. You can be single and have eternal life. You can be sick and have eternal life. Listen, the, my condition and my economic, social circumstances in life does not determine eternal life in me. Eternal life is given to me only through Jesus Christ. Can't nobody take it from him. Thank him for what he's done for you. Take time to thank him. Today, take time to thank him. Please open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life. You didn't have to do it. Remember that song? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Remember this song, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I, I really don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But listen, I'm glad. I'm so glad that he did. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. See, some people counted me out. And maybe some people counted you out, but God changed the headline. See, Satan wanted those headlines to read. She didn't make it, but God said not so. Thank God for Jesus who destroyed the works of the devil. Oh, I'm going to stop right here because I, I really feel a preach coming on, but I'm going to stop right here. I just want you to thank him because he's so wonderful. Thank him because he's on his way, folks. Hold on. Keep oil in your lamps. Keep your lamps trimmed. Don't get caught up in the that has gone on in this world. Lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset you and run with patience the race that is set before you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm going to stop. Let's pray. Righteous Father and our God, Oh, how we thank you. If it had not been for you on our side, so many of us know we would have never made it. It is of your mercies that we are not consumed, my Father, because your compassion, it fails not. It is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Father. Oh, God, not our faithfulness, but great is your faithfulness, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for interceding for us right now, Jesus, on the right hand of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. God, help us to be rapture ready. Help us to keep ourselves unspotted from this wicked world and to keep our garments because you told us, you told us, keep your garment white in righteousness and in holiness. We love you because you loved us. We honor you and we worship you, Father. And we say thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, God, our Redeemer, our Deliverer. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. And we bless your holy name. You're worthy, God, of all the glory, all the honor and praise. Nobody is like you, not in heaven, not in earth. God, nobody is like you, Jesus. We give you glory. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you got to know him, folks. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. We're not here to live forever. Come on, look out into the world. Folks, we're dying. Not just from COVID. We're dying from all kinds of things. Just because tomorrow's not promised to any of us, not a one of us, it's not promised. Listen. God loves us so much. He gave Jesus so we didn't have to die in hell. That's what he's talking about. It is not his will that any should perish. God does not want you to perish. That's why Jesus got nailed to that. You and I didn't have to perish. Come on, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Open up your mouth and say, Jesus, you were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon you. And by your stripes, Jesus, I am healed. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. God will do it. And guess what? It's not a feeling. It's a fact. Have a great week. Amen.